finally, finally, Dallas Cowboys fans, your quarterback has returned. Your quarterback has resigned. And I just have to say something. How about them Cowboys? The Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Dak Prescott is back. He has resigned and he will be the franchise for the foreseeable future in Dallas. The centerpiece of the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy for you Cowboys fans because I know how much you love Dak Prescott. And I know how much Dak Prescott wanted to be back with the Dallas Cowboys. It is home for him. And I can't see it. And I wouldn't want to see it any other way. Dak Prescott has resigned with the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are giving Dak a four-year, $160 million deal. A bag, okay? Including a record $128 million Garen Dam Teed. Dak Prescott is here to stay. That puts him at $40 million a year, second only behind Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, $45 million. That's ahead of Russell Wilson. That's ahead of Deshaun Watson annually or on average, you could say. Now, in this video, I want to discuss the future of the Dallas Cowboys. I want to discuss what this deal means for the Cowboys, what this deal means for you Cowboys fans, how I feel about the deal, okay? Is it a fair deal? Is it a good deal for Dallas? Is it a good deal for Dak? And then I'm going to talk about what the Cowboys need to do to enable this team to be successful, to enable Dak Prescott to be successful and to win a Super Bowl because that's what it's all about. That is the first step, re-signing your franchise quarterback, enabling, ensuring that you have that franchise quarterback and now you officially do. Okay, so let's take a look at this deal first real quick. But before I dive into all the details of the move, the deal and the re-signing, and before I discuss my overall thoughts and the future of the Dallas Cowboys, make sure that you do Gronk spike this like button, baby. And then don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more NFL analysis, news, and reaction just like this. Also, comment in the comment section below. What do you think of this move? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know, Cowboys fans, or any other fan for that matter. Let me know what you think of this move. Do you think Dak got the good deal here? Do you think Dak was overpaid? Or do you feel this was a great deal for both sides? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get into it. Dak Prescott, in my opinion, took a somewhat team-friendly deal. Now, on the surface, it feels like this is a little bit of an overpaying, okay, by the Dallas Cowboys, but you have to understand how this contract is structured to help the Dallas Cowboys. In 2021 and in 2022, he has a 20 million base salary, only 20 million base salary. He is making a total expectedly of $30 million, okay? That $20 million is fully guaranteed in both of those first two seasons, but his salary is only really about $30 million, which isn't so bad at all. That would put him, you know, around the 10th highest paid quarterback, somewhere around there. Then when you move past that, that is where the real money comes in, 2023 to 2025. $42.5 million that's his cap number, okay? 2026, it goes back down 10 million to 32 and a half million. Now, in my opinion, this contract is structured in a way that Dak and the Cowboys will be able to maneuver a lot of his money into signing bonus and then enable Dallas to basically creatively enable their roster and their salary cap to keep having enough space so that Dak has a good team around him. You could call this somewhat a Tom Brady-like deal because yes, Dak Prescott is not the best quarterback in the league, but he certainly is one of the 10 best quarterbacks in the league. He is an elite quarterback and he's just entering his prime. So you wanted to get him to be paid. And I believe that even let's say, if he's being paid on average 40 million a year, that 40 million isn't going to be looking as intimidating 
as it would, you know, now, it will look way less intimidating in two, three years, okay? Because that's when some other quarterbacks are going to get paid a lot. You know, you got to think about Josh Allen, for example, who's going to get paid a bag. So you have to think about the future. And yes, yeah, sometimes that $40 million looks a little off. But you have to remember, again, this year, next year, that $40 million doesn't exist for Dak, okay? He's actually taking less money. So in a way, it is a very team-friendly deal. Expanding on that, in 2022, they can turn more than $18 million into a signing bonus, which would then create $14.5 million of cap space. This is according to ESPN. So Dak Prescott, actually, while on the surface, it appeared to be a lot of money and maybe for some people too much money for Dak Prescott because he's not Patrick Mahomes, he's not Deshaun Watson, Maybe it appeared to be too much, but it does appear that this is a contract that works both for Dallas and for Dak Prescott. So Dak's getting paid, he's getting what he's worth, but Dallas, it's also team friendly enough that they can still have a good team, a good roster, a good build around their franchise quarterback. We actually saw something similar in Dallas with Tony Romo, where at a time, I would say Tony Romo was almost paid too much money. And that's nothing against Tony Romo. I love Tony Romo. He was a great quarterback. But Dallas almost paid him too much to the point to where they couldn't create a great team roster that they would like to create around Tony Romo. With Dak, they didn't want to make that same mistake. And I feel like too many teams have seen their franchise and their roster really just get shred apart by free agency and by paying too high of a percentage to that quarterback. So as it appears and as reported, Dak will get paid big time, but his team won't suffer to the degree that some have in the past. So I like this move a lot for both sides in terms of the money. Dak's making what he's worth and Dallas is getting a great franchise quarterback who's awesome on and off the field as a leader of a franchise, a leader of men, and as a great football player and ambassador of the city of Dallas, on top of it not being too crazy expensive where it's Mahomes money. And even with Mahomes, as we've discussed, that somewhat is also a team-friendly deal. So teams are being a lot smarter with their money. They're determining how to put this in certain ways in the contract and in the written word to have it so that it can still enable enough comfort and enough room for the team to make enough moves to win Super Bowls. And that's what it's all about in the NFL. Jerry Jones wants to win and Dak wants to win. So now that we have the money out of the way, now that we have all the gritty details of the contract and the money, let's discuss how Dallas can proceed. How Dallas can continue to be a good team with the talented roster around Dak and why I believe Dallas will be the team in the NFC East that will have a stranglehold on this division for at least the next decade, okay? Let's discuss it. Now, Dallas has always had high expectations. Last year, they had very high expectations. They did not meet those expectations. Dak Prescott got injured, though. Through those first few games, his offense was unbelievable. They were putting up 32 and a half points per game, something to that degree. Dak was having a career year thus far. He was in the MVP conversation, putting up a ton of yards, a ton of points, but their defense wasn't stopping anybody. I mean, more holes than Swiss cheese. So the Dallas Cowboys, again, similarly to Tony Romo, where when Tony Romo was making a lot of money, his offensive line wasn't good. His defense sucked. And a lot of that was due to paying too much money to the quarterback. Now, with Dak, that happened even before he was paid, right? Last year, it just felt like the defense fell apart. They lost Byron Jones. They lost Robert Quinn. They lost some key contributors there from a year ago. And they weren't able to hold their own on the defensive side of the football, along with a new defensive coordinator, a system that didn't quite match the players. A lot of stuff happened, okay? A lot of things went wrong there. But with Dallas, I think moving forward, right start next year. This team's going to be competitive, especially within the NFC least, okay? I said it correctly, the NFC least. 
You look at the other teams. The Philadelphia Eagles are in rebuild. They just traded Carson Wentz. They have Jalen Hurts, who I like, promising, but okay, they're in a rebuild. A lot of their best players are getting older. Then you have Washington. Okay, Washington's interesting because they're a quarterback away, but still a quarterback away. Dallas has their quarterback. And the Giants, eh, wait and see, I guess. You know, I like Joe Judge. I like Daniel Jones a little bit, but they're not on the level of Dak. They're not on the level of Dallas in terms of talent. So Dallas, this time next year, you know, we should have been talking about Dallas being in the playoffs. They should be in the playoffs this year at the very least, right? So Dallas has a talented core and that core is, is Dak. That core is the wide receivers, the trio, right? Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and then, of course, C.D. Lamb. So those trio of wide receivers are one of the more talented trios in the league. And I believe strongly in giving your quarterback weapons. I think there has been no better time in the NFL history to have as many wide receivers and tight ends and pass catchers as you possibly can surround your quarterback with. It's more valuable now than ever. And as of right now, you know, C.D. Lamb is on a super cheap contract because he's a rookie. So you won't have to pay him for a couple years. So you want to maximize that. Once we get to that window, we might think about moving on from one of these three. But so far, so good with those three. And you'll have a couple of years to work with that. Now, Zeke is the interesting one because Zeke, I think, is currently overpaid. I currently don't believe he's an elite running back. But he's shown elite flashes, of course. I think he's getting to the point where he might be leaving his prime. Zeke might be the guy that you have to trade, you have to move off of within the next year or two in order to get your team the way that you want it. Now, the offensive line is really where you're going to have to start to rebuild because that offensive line around 2014 to 2017, 18 was maybe the best in the league, right? Through that tenure there. And of course, one of them retired already, Travis Frederick. So you had to replace him. Center is a question mark heading into next year, although there's some promising prospects there. Left tackle, okay. Tyron Smith is great borderline hall of fame but he's getting older he's been hurt a lot you're gonna have to look for his replacement very soon right tackle locked down by collins zach martin should be good for a while left guard williams is still kind of a question mark so offensive line wise right now going to next year still good but like the future of it is a little bit more questionable tight end can use an upgrade although i like jarwin i like schultz a little bit they showed some flashes it's not an immediate need but could use an upgrade but defense is really where you need to look, okay? But I'm just throwing out offensive line. I'm throwing out running back potential moves. I also love Tony Pollard as well. So defensively, the defensive line needs a ton of work. You basically need to scrap that and, and figure it out, right? So Demarcus Lawrence is locked down contract. He's your go-to guy. He's your go-to pass rusher, but he needs to act like it. Sometimes he's a little inconsistent. On the other side, feels like Gregory is going to be a piece that you use at least this year and he's shown flashes at least when he has his head on straight the interior is whack I mean you guys need help there big time big time help you need to draft some guys you need to sign some guys you could get around not having elite interior players that's okay I think if you were not to spend a lot of money at a position it would be there you'd at least like to have one guy that's a starter consistently you know over this tenure that can really just be reliable. Don't have to be highly paid. Doesn't have to be Aaron Donald, but somebody you can count on. And I think Dallas will really look into improving that position this offseason as well as possibly in the draft. And then you look at linebacker Vander Esch, question marks with his health, but obviously great player when he plays. Jalen Smith, good player when he plays as well. Linebackers, okay. Sean Lee is moving on. Safeties. Really look for Dan Quinn, who's a, the Atlanta former Atlanta head coach, former Seattle Legion of Boom defensive coordinator. This is the Seattle scheme guy, okay? The cover three, press bail. Now, maybe he'll turn his defense upside down, tweak it, change it a little bit, but I think the main reason they brought him in there is because of the fundamental of how he plays defense, how he teaches defense, and the fundamentals are very important to this defense. So I could see him bringing in some players that are familiar with this defense, whether that's Keanu Neal or Richard Sherman or KJ Wright or potentially some defensive linemen who have been in the mix there as well in the past. So really look for Dan Quinn to bring in his guys to surround some of these young guys, especially in the secondary. Like I wouldn't be shocked if a guy like Keanu Neal ended up in Dallas, who I love at strong safety from Atlanta. 
a guy like that would go a long way, I think, improving this defense. They need a lot of help at safety. They need a lot of help at cornerback. Uh, three or four of their starters from the secondary a year ago are all free agents from Lewis to Awuzie to they still have one of their corners, Diggs, and then Woods. They're all free agents, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So they have to completely rebuild this secondary. Some will come through free agency. I don't expect a huge splash signing. Maybe they could go after an Anthony Harris or maybe a Marcus Williams. A safety there that might cost a little bit more of a pretty penny, but I'd expect the draft to be where they look to corner and positions like that. But I think the main point here is, For the foreseeable future, for the next one to two years, you're working on the defense. You're building that defense to a championship level because you know that Dak and the rest of the offense, they're ready and really geared up to go. Especially with Kellen Moore calling the plays, who I like a lot, and Mike McCarthy's second year in this offense. Remember, Dak was playing career football the first year with Mike McCarthy. You know, it was slight differences in the offense. Still a Kellen Moore offense, but slight differences in the offense. And really since Kellen Moore has taken over from Jason Garrett and that whole regime, he and Dak in particular has seen a major uptick in his production as a passer. So a lot more play action and things like that has taken place with this offense. And I think Dak has really improved as a downfield passer. I think he's really improved as just the the overall intelligence and IQ of the position has grown over the last couple of years. And I expect that to continue. Now, Dak does have a question with his knee or with his injuries, and I think it'll take him a little bit of time to get back to himself, but I think it won't take too long, and we should see the Dak that we saw that was flirting with MVP hood, you know, last year, probably as soon as mid-season this next year. So this offense will be really good, and we'll see what they do in the defense. I'm going to be very critical this offseason with the moves they make defensively because I'll keep a close eye on it because they have not made the correct moves. I thought they should have kept Byron Jones, and they moved off of him. Even though it cost them a lot, I thought they should have kept him as much as they could. Or You know, you could argue all the way back to the Zeke draft that they should have drafted Jalen Ramsey. Okay, that's a different conversation for a different day, but you know, defensively they've always kind of for the last five years put that on the back burner in order to get their offense with as many weapons and as much protection for Dak as possible Dak has a great support staff there a great number of playmakers and they're going to be a very talented offense but it's about the defense too if you want to have a solid team that's consistent you need a consistent defense at the very I'm not saying the 85 Bears I'm not saying the 2000 Ravens but you need a solid enough defense that plays good football that complements the offense. So preferably a defense that can get after the quarterback, a defense that can cause turnovers, a defense that complements an offense that scores a lot, that has a high pace of play, right? Think Peyton Manning's defenses, right? The Dwight Freenies, the Robert Mathises that just get after you, strip sacks and cause fumbles, right? So that to me is what I'm looking for in Dallas, okay? And I think Dallas needs to really work on their defense immediately this offseason. I think that will be the priority. But again, look out for offensive line and look out for maybe a Zeke move coming within the next couple of years. But I don't think that's an immediate need. Overall, I love this move. I think Dallas is going to be looking and sitting pretty this next year. And I really have high expectations for them moving forward. I don't think they'll be a Super Bowl contender this year. But I do think that they will be around that conversation because they have now re-signed Dak for the next five to seven years, as long as they have him in that building, because I think Dak does still have some room to improve, which is the part that I don't think enough people are talking about. I think we just saw the beginning of the rise of Dak last year. So I think Dak could even get better. All right, guys, those are my thoughts on the Dak Prescott re-signing with the Dallas Cowboys and the future of Dallas. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. It's Mitch with the Bottom Line View. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and Gronk Spike that like button. Peace.